Father God, it is a beautiful spring day. Let us appreciate the gift. We are in a sanctuary this morning, together as family. Let us appreciate the gift. There are many on our prayer list this morning. Let us appreciate the gift. There are those amongst us that have lost loved ones. Let us appreciate the gift. Our world has endured a pandemic, and the governmental response filled with confusion and best guesses and estimates and trials. Father, let us appreciate the gift. Open our hearts and our minds this morning, Lord, to the message you have for us. And then let us be so moved that we take that message internally to change us and externally to impact others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning we are talking, and it just seems so appropriate. I said to my wife last night, yesterday afternoon, whatever time it was, it was far later than it should have been. I have absolutely no idea what I'm preaching on tomorrow. Please pray for me. Now sometimes I know exactly what I'm going to speak on all week, and I have the whole week to prepare for it, and sometimes I just don't. And I often wonder, is it me or is it him? And I think the answer is it's both of us. There are times where he needs me to trust him. And I believe the message I'm going to bring is a consequence of that trust that I have in him. Turn in your Bibles to the book of James. James is one of my favorite chapters because James was a doer. And I am definitely, my wife would tell you sometimes begrudgingly, a doer. I'm always doing something. I try to live my faith as opposed to just have my faith. Something I would encourage all of us to contemplate. We're going to start in verse 2 of chapter 1. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. End of sermon. Would that be nice? But count it all joy when you experience trials. God, what are you talking about? Are you crazy? I've just been punched in the face, hit with a diagnosis, lost my job fell down the stairs, had a tree smack me in the head, fell out of a tree, threw off a bicycle at 20 miles an hour, flew off a motorcycle at 45, been diagnosed with cancer, count it all joy, are you crazy? And I'm sorry if I didn't call out your particular trial. I was trying to be all inclusive. But I probably missed yours, didn't I? Because life is filled with one situation after another. There is no complete list of stuff that can happen to you. There isn't. Because every time we think we've discovered the list of all the stuffs that can happen to us, something new, well, I never heard of that happening before, shows up. Count it all joy. Be happy when life kicks you in the face. You've got to be kidding me. But like most things in the Bible, there are reasons beyond basic human understanding. And it takes 
an open mind and an open heart and an open soul to find the reasons for the trials that we face. In verse 3, James says, For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. In one version, produces patience. In another version. And let steadfastness or patience have its full effect that you may be perfect, complete, and lacking in nothing. Anyone remember that movie, Jerry Maguire, a few years ago with Tom Cruise and Renee, what's her name? I'm sorry? Zellweger, thank you. And he bursts into the house at the end of the movie and she, they had a big breakup in the relationship and all, they're all messing up and they're going through their trial and lots of pain and tears and she's literally having a I'm glad he's gone party with her girlfriends. Apparently this is what women do, I don't know. But she was having a we're glad he's gone party and he bursts in the door and he looks at her and he says, you complete me. My best Tom Cruise impersonation. <laughs> and my wife is pretty awesome, i got to tell you. I stumbled across a picture, and I'd show you, but it, I don't know if I could figure out how to do it. It might be worth a try, though. Hang on a minute. <sighs> yep. Can you see that? I know it's a postage stamp for some of you. But that is a picture of my wife that I took when we were still dating. You can see why I married her, can't you? Bob, you can nod. Your wife's sitting next to you. Okay. But I stumbled across that picture here recently, and I said, you know, through the power of technology, I'm going to make that my background. And I did. And oddly enough, I even did it successfully. Got to get my technology to know which way is up. But my wife doesn't complete me. She can't. She does tremendously valuable and wonderful things for me, with me, and to me. But she doesn't complete me. It takes God to do that. Now, I can't imagine life without her. But many of you have lost a spouse, and you can't imagine it, and it's not the same. And I can't even begin to imagine what that's like. But as awesome as your spouse was, they can't complete you either. It takes God to do that. Many of us go years with a hole inside us, and we don't know why, because we don't recognize the hole as the God void waiting to be filled by the power of the Holy Spirit. And then we do all kinds of nasty and terrible things to fill that hole. I did it through alcohol. Other people do it through other stuff, sometimes just being mean. Sometimes just being obnoxious. Sometimes drinking drugs, alcohol. Is there any shortage to the list of things that the world has used to try to complete themselves? No. And yet the one thing that is necessary for us to be complete is free. Its only price is humility. James Chapter 1, verse 5, he continues. He says, If you lack wisdom, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and wisdom will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. When you pray, pray in faith, in, excuse me, in faith 
When you pray, pray in faith. Pray believing that the God of the universe can accomplish the miracle. See, the hard part is because there are times in our lives where we pray so earnestly and in faith and then it doesn't work out because it just wasn't the will of God. And sometimes in those circumstances, we miss the very lesson why we're going through stuff in the first place. I was talking with somebody recently, and their son is battling cancer. And it's been a long, ugly road in a young man and a tough cancer. And this young man, 30 years old, turned to his family recently when they were lamenting about fighting of the cancer said, it's not about my cancer. It's about love. From somebody in the midst of the trial. What a statement. Today, maybe, Wayne Milby may pass. Five days now in this unresponsive state children flying in from all over the country, standing by his bedside, wondering whether this will be the moment. I didn't get a chance to know Wayne very well, but I know this, he's going to be missed, because he already is. Such a quiet and unassuming man, as far as I knew him, But every time that he was in church, he would come up to me every Sunday morning and say the same thing. With tears in his eyes, he would say, Pastor Mike, I'm so glad you're here. Now, I don't know what I did, if anything, to bring such a reaction. But I know it touched me. And he's probably gone from here, from this place, one more time, he'll be with us. But there's a reason even for his delay in his departure. I don't know what it is. Maybe it has to do with bringing the family together. Maybe, it, maybe it's just for us to reflect on our own lives. Somebody asked me this morning how I was doing it without even thinking about it. And I'm a little embarrassed about this. Standing next to a man in a wheelchair, I said, I'm alive and well and upright and mobile. Yeah, st- no, Mary, standing next to a guy in a wheelchair, that's what I said. Because that's the statement that I've come to say when people ask me how I'm doing. Because I am alive, because there were times I wasn't sure that was going to happen. I'm well because there have been times I haven't been. I'm upright because there have been times when my back hurt so bad I couldn't be upright. And I'm well. And boy, that word has so many different meanings. But you know, the reality is that that fine gentleman's in our sanctuary this morning. He's here. He is alive and well. He may not be upright, but he's got a powered wheelchair and he is mobile. Mobile enough to come and join us. Welcome. Where are you this morning? We've been in the middle of a pandemic for the last 15 months. Let me ask a question. How have you grown since the pandemic started? How have you changed because scripture tells us to take joy when we face trials of many kinds because it produces patience perseverance steadfastness that means we're supposed to get better through our trials how have you gotten better over the last 15 months I hope you have. 
I hope you spent more time in the Word. I hope you spent time with God. I hope you spend time looking at your life and realizing that you only have X left. Whatever that X is for you is different. We had a conversation in Bible study a week, week and a half ago about if you knew the last day of your life, would you want to know what it was? If I could give you the date, would you like to have it? And oddly enough, only one person in the room said yes. And I'm not going to embarrass that person. Just because they're the only one, it might be embarrassing. But would you want to know if you knew your end date? And if you knew your end date, what would you do differently? If you knew that this coming Friday, a tree was going to fall on your car as you're driving down the road. If you knew that was coming Friday, what would be different Monday through Thursday? I wouldn't drive. <laughs> you stole my joke, girlfriend. <laughs> but if you do, if you knew it was coming, what would be different? Who would you call to tell him one last time you love him? You know, every once in a while, and I don't know why, but doors open and doors close in your life. And we're impacted by those changes. Our directions sometimes, and sometimes, and you got to go back the way you came. Sound effects are free, by the way. How would your life be different if you knew you had a week left? And if you don't have a week left, what are you waiting for to do the things that you would do in the last week? What letter would you write? What form of expression of love or gratitude would you make? And what are you waiting for? Somebody was kind enough to send me a two-year anniversary card this week. This is not an attempt to get any more. But I was touched because I did not expect it. I just didn't expect it. But it was a lovely gesture. And they said some amazingly wonderful things inside. To whom do you owe a card like that? To express your love and your gratitude and your support? Our prayer list is so long. What if we all just took the prayer list this week and wrote a note to each name on it? What difference would that make in the lives of those people? if suddenly they received 50 cards this week with words of encouragement, how long would that take us to do 20 cards or to do five or to do one? How have you grown during this pandemic? How many have spent a lot of time alone Alone, alone. It gets to feel that way sometimes, doesn't it, Miss Sandy? Alone. Imagine what this was like back in 1918 where we didn't have the internet, cell phones, email, FaceTime, postal service. We haven't even had to be alone mentally and emotionally, just physically. How have you grown? So, if all this is true, Mike, if we're supposed to count it all joy in times of trials, and we're supposed to be 
not quite happy about the hard things we go through, but to find meaning in the hard things we go through. And if we're really impacted and we really grow and we produce patience and perseverance, how are we supposed to live? I mean, really, how are we supposed to live? So I think a good solution is in the book of Galatians chapter 5. And I find it interesting because right prior to what I'm going to share with you in verses 22 and 23 about how to live with the Spirit, this is what precedes it in 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I would never in a million years ask you to raise your hand and admit how many of those you've participated in. Because frankly, I don't want to know. But I think most of us have had times in our life where division and jealousy and envy trump almost everything. Where anger takes its place above all else. Where we are so upset with somebody for some either real or perceived slight, that that anger, that whatever, clouds the vision of what it means to be a Christian. We've all been there. As one person told me, I was such a man of anger in my youth. And thank God I'm no longer that. But how many of us let dissension and division get in the way of the movement and the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives? Way too many is the answer, or all of us. So what are we to do? How are we to grow through this pandemic? The answer to that follows in verses 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And against such things there is no law. Count it all joy, my brethren, when you endure trials of many kinds, for these produce patience, and patience produces perseverance. How have you grown through the pandemic? And more importantly, now that the pandemic appears to be coming to an end over the course of the next month or two, I think that will ultimately be announced, we hope, But certainly the government here in Virginia is taking steps to allow us to get back to a little bit more normal life. Not the same in other states, you know. As this pandemic comes to an end and you have an opportunity to get back to regular life, are you going to be led by the Spirit? Or are you going to be led by the world? Last summer, we did this water bottle ministry, and it was pretty cool, wasn't it, Maria? By the time we were done, we had 53 church members that had come and helped in the middle of the pandemic. Either help with the water bottles and putting the labels on. We got that meet coming up. When's that coming up, Miss Peggy? Help me out. Janie, when? Wednesday. Wednesday this week. 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. In the fellowship hall, this week, Wednesday, 10 o'clock, put it on your calendar. Ooh, I just shipped it into Boston there. Did you hear that? I said calendar. <laughs> Next thing you know, I'll be pocking hard in the yard and all that kind of stuff. This Wednesday at 10, we're going to have a water bottle labeling party. Because we have a thousand labels to affix to these bottles. I hope you can come and join us. Or come on a Saturday morning for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, an hour and a half, two hours. 
Come help me load bottles at 7.30 in the morning on Saturday. That'd be nice. Because we'll be doing that at two every single Saturday all summer long. To share the living water of Jesus Christ through an H2O water to people who need it. To put our spirit in action. To let the trials that we've endured reach the world in a new way. Here's our future. Couldn't have timed that better if I'd planned it. And I have but one question. Do they have to be so ridiculously, incredibly cute? <laughs> My gosh. That is our future right there. The gift and the joy and the blessings of children only develop when we, the adults, do what we're supposed to do. To love by the Spirit in the face of trials. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for this message this morning. I pray that you found your way through my clunky words to touch a heart or two, to wrap yourself around a soul and help them feel loved. Father, it is necessary for all of us each and every one of us, to remember that every day is a gift. Every day is an opportunity for us to say thank you to you, but also I love you to a stranger. Father, those who know me and those who know me best know that I am a highly imperfect person. But Father, you know my heart and my desire to serve and to love to the best of my ability. Father, let that be the siren call to all of us, for none of us are perfect. None of us have arrived at the spiritual place that you want us to be. Father, for those in our midst that are still in the midst of the trials, Give them strength. Give them your eyes to see the purpose. And give them the comfort of the Holy Spirit. If you are in our sanctuary this morning and you do not yet have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, it's not complicated. You don't even have to really understand. You just have to have faith. And you just say, Jesus, this world's a tough place and I've been getting kicked in the face. I know, even though I can't explain it, there is a hole inside of me that needs you. Father, come in and fill that hole. Jesus, come and inhabit my life and help me to understand what it means to truly be loved. I know that you died for me and I know that you rose again to show me a path to eternity. Father, I willingly give myself to you. In Jesus' name. If you have prayed that this morning for the first time, let me know. If you prayed it years ago and you just forgot what it means and somehow this morning you were moved to remember, let me know. Just send me a note that said, I remembered. Sign your name. 
We live in a world that's hurting. The modern church fathers within our Baptist denomination are using a phrase that I'm not even sure what it means yet. But they're saying the church is the healer message deliverer to a world suffering from a pandemic. Our churches need to become more like hospitals than country clubs where the broken people come to find love without question, without condition. That's our charter. As we leave today, remember, the trials are not over. Just this one's coming to a close. The next one's coming soon. I don't know what it is. And the one you're in won't last forever. Open yourself to the leading of the Holy Spirit and watch Him work. Father God, as we leave the sanctuary this morning, let us leave empowered and emboldened and uplifted. Let us leave, Father, with a fresh infusion of the power of the Holy Spirit inside us. And let us leave, Father, with a mission to share that love to those in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.